We are joined by MC Courage, head coach Sean Nehas, at the team's opening game of the NWSL weekend in Mexico in the U.S. Summer Cup against the Orlando Pride. Sean, you've already finished up the season series against Orlando, but obviously both squads have been a little different with the Olympic players gone. What, uh, what are you looking for from this game, and how different is it going to be from those first two games against Orlando? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think it's – we were discussing it, but – they have their way of playing, and I, I would assume that they'll stick to it. I think it's an opportunity for all teams in the league to have players that maybe haven't gotten a lot of time to work on the things and the principles that the club is, or their individual teams have laid down in terms of their style of play. So while they're missing players, we're missing players, they're still a very good side, obviously. They're the best team in the league right now. So, But for us, it's it's more about trying things and exploring and giving players time that need to get minutes. Um, you know, we'll see how it all shakes out. Obviously you always want to go into games and get a result, but you know, I think there's, there's other things that we like to do that is important for our players and our system and style. So, so we know going into the second half of the season where we're at and where players stand. So it's going to be another good game and, and we don't expect anything less than Orlando being at their best uh, at the end of the day. The way Seb hasn't set up, the work ethic, the, the commitment, the pride that they put in, um, I wouldn't expect anything less than as if they had their full roster. I have a question about Alicia Rodriguez. Before the press conference, you touched on it a little bit, but she mentioned how in recent weeks you talked about wanting to try a few different things during the summer cup. Is that maybe looking at some different tactics to try or is it more about getting – Different players playing time and seeing players in a little bit of a different role than they used to be seeing this season. Yeah, I think it's a combination of everything, but I'm not going to say whether it's tactics or not. And people that have stopped asking us will never talk about tactics here. And uh, yeah, I think it's a combination of everything. I think you know you have three games in what tw ten days, twelve days, and I think it's. Uh, we can't push the envelope with players that have gotten a lot of minutes too. And we have to make sure that we're not putting them at risk. But I think overall it's, you're, you're always trying something new. If you have players in different spots or players that haven't been getting a lot of time, it's always going to be something new because you have to see how they handle the pressures of the game. So, um, but there's nothing defined. I just think there's going to be different things going on and roster rotations and what have you, but um, that could also not happen. So we'll see. You mentioned in uh, your quote about Victoria Howard signing her contract, how she's been training with the team and it's been a really, players like that play such an important role in setting the culture and setting the training environment. What do those on the kind of unsigned heroes and maybe unknown players that play a role that mean to this team and to the environment that you've created for the team? Well, I think it's something that we've always done here. We've all, I mean, people have to remember Dory has been with us since IMG. I believe, and hasn't got any minutes, can't get minutes because she's not rostered, hasn't been getting paid, doesn't get paid, um, is obviously provided, you know, she's getting housing and part of the team and everyday stuff, but the kid wants to be here. And that's what she said to me, you know, towards the end of the preseason, she's the one that brought up to us that she would like to stay. And people, players like that are hard to come by. And, you know, she reminds me a lot of previous players that have come through our club, just in her work ethic, her commitment, um, her desire. She's an unbelievable kid, you know, great attitude every single day, brings every bit of energy that she has in her for the betterment of the team. And I think in turn, we're starting to see her develop and her growth. But I think it says a lot about the staff and more so the locker room that she's been accepted as part of the, as part of the team and the club. And, you know, we don't look at it, even when we have college players come in and train, we treat them as though they're one of us. And I think that's what people want. They want to feel they come here to learn and get better. And I think Dory's doing that. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're thrilled for her that she can get this, you know, even it's just a small little bit. It's just a, it's just a reward for, for her commitment to us as a club. I do, I do. Um, I wanted to ask you, I'm going to teach you on Marissa Bobo and her being her first professional start on Saturday. Uh, I know you guys drafted her two years ago. I, I just love to hear your perspective on how she's grown and how she's gotten into this position where you feel confident enough to put her in there and uh, let her get her first start. Yeah, I mean, Mo is, I mean, I'm not with her every single day in the day-to-day -day aspects. I mean, that's Nathan. He's done an unbelievable job with her on her development. But Mo is, um, look, being a goalkeeper is difficult, you know, because usually teams have a number one, and we have one of the best in the world in case. So Mo, every single day, is showing up knowing that she's in that position, but she trains every single day in preparation for this moment. It's not like she trains and Nathan doesn't train her as though she 
there's a hierarchy. So Mo is well received. Uh, she, I have the utmost. I would have the utmost confidence putting in, putting her in a, in a regular season game in, in the event that that needs to happen because she's earned that. She trains the same way Case does. She puts the work in. She has a smile on her face every single day. The players love her. And I, you know, you, when you have these opportunities, players does, are justified in getting the reward. You know, I'll be honest. Even if Case wasn't with the Olympic team, we'd probably be getting Marissa some minutes this week and or these games anyway because it's the right thing to do. Because just like we did with Caitlin. You know, it's it's an opportunity for them to play. We need to need they need to know where they stand in the in the realm of the game. Um, but look, she she's put the commitment into into her growth and and her dedication as a goalkeeper has grown. Um, but she is a really valuable piece of who we are, uh, as are all of our players. But you know, we have field players that sometimes complain about playing time because they love to play. But they should look at the goalkeepers and realize that every single week they know they're coming in probably not playing. And uh, that's a forgotten thing. And that's an unbelievable characteristic and trait that, that Mo has. And I have the utmost confidence in putting her in. We played her last year when we were in Mexico. I think it was against Cruz Azul or it was someone. And she was unbelievable. Unbelievable. So, yeah, she, she's this opportunity has been long, long coming. So we're, we're excited to see her in, in between the pipes. Uh, I have one more question uh, regarding this challenge cup that you guys are about to play in. How important is it to, to, to keep that competitive edge? You know what I mean? In these, knowing that you know they don't count towards your NWSL league standings and everything, but it's also an opportunity for the players who don't get as much playing time. Still, bringing them in, you want to have a high level of competitive edge. How important is it to filter that down to your players? Well, they're pro athletes, so I think anytime they get a chance to play, it's better than not having any games. Um, but to compare their competitors, so they want to. They, there's a scoreboard that's going to be on. They're going to know and they're going to understand it. The thing is, and I've said this before, I still don't understand how this Liga MX Summer Cup thing was created and who created it because we can go win every game and still not move on. So I would like a clarification on that because that makes it difficult for players sometimes being like, so we can win our group and not make the semis, which in, I don't know, makes no sense to me. So for us, it's really about how do we continue to make sure we challenge our players to help them grow every single day and get better. That's our, that's our philosophy here. Uh, if it was three games against college teams, we'd have that same focus. So you just have to keep reminding them that there's a, there's an end goal here. And that end goal is to make sure that after these three games that we're prepared to move on to the second half of our season, be ready to hit the ground running. We're going to have everyone back and healthy at that stage, hopefully, and uh, hopefully put on a good show. But, We'll see how these three games go. Is it life or death for me? No. Is regular season life or death for me? Nope. Um, but I think, it, again, if anything, it's it's an opportunity to compete uh, for something. It just, you don't know where it's going to lead. I, my personal opinion is the Challenge Cup should have just stayed the way it was. It should have never changed. Um, and maybe you add the Liga MX teams in. But... Um, because at least you knew you were playing for a money pot. You were playing for a, a cup. Um, this year, competing for, I think, Champions League, CONCACAF Champions League qualification. Um, and I don't know much more than that, but it's, they're pros, and my, our group's always ready to, to play and eager to play. Sarah, any questions? No. Uh, anything on Zoom? Thank you, Sean. Thanks, guys.